absolutely a lot at stake here. There are just so many people involved in this case. And this particular trial is supposed to last six to eight weeks. Jeffrey, how careful do the attorneys have to be while planning their cases so it doesn't become confusing to the jury? I find it confusing to me. Right. Anytime you have a case that is that length, what you have to do is you have to balance all of the information that you need to get in front of a jury with being the person that they feel like is potentially either wasting their time, boring them, or confusing them. And so when you're looking at that length of a trial, you need to schedule it in a way that's going to keep their attention, where you're not going to have days and days of boring scientific information that's going to completely put them to sleep and ruin the effectiveness of any of that scientific information. And they're going to also have to be able to paint the picture of all of these different co-defendants and all of their different culp culpabilities, meaning what they did and what they're responsible for, but also be able to tie it all back to complicity and put them all together. Because like you said, they're going to say that he didn't pull the trigger, but he is the motive for this and he was involved in the planning for this. And so they're going to have to figure out a way to effectively tell that story in a way that doesn't lose the jury in the length and the volume of information. Right, and that ties it back to the defendant who they are, that they have on trial. Yeah, it's certainly an interesting tactic, and it means that during those opening statements and during the various testimony that they'll hear, they'll at least be able to picture it a little bit, picture where it played out and what the scene looked like. And they were supposed to start on Tuesday, but of course they're now starting next Monday because somebody in the case was sick. Jeffrey, do you think that this delay will have any effect on the jurors or even the attorneys for that matter having that extra week? Well, I think it's great for the attorneys. We'll always take more prep time. You can never be too prepped for a six to eight week trial. No question, you'll always take the extra time. But that being said, a jury is going to try and read into it. They're going to try and figure out who was sick. Why were they sick? Was somebody scared of this case moving forward? And they're faking an illness. That is why a judge uses general language of saying a participant in this trial is ill. I had this happen in a case for me three weeks ago where it was my client who got ill. And so the judge said a participant because we didn't want the jury to be able to read anything into it. And it was genuine and it needed to be dealt with like I'm sure this is. Judges do not take it lightly that they are now adding a week onto their docket where they're going to be into this trial still and that things are going to have to move around for the rest of the courthouse. And so it's the best way to handle it, but it can be misinterpreted if the jury figures out who it is before they've rendered a verdict or the case has ended in some fashion. Very interesting, and thanks for sharing that real-life experience. I didn't know that when we booked you, but it's good to have you on with that. Time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll recap more of the defense's case in the Parkland shooter trial. Stay with us.